We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. All right, boys and girls, today we're going to make a big announcement. We are changing the name of the show at the request of Katie's dad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it will now be called Fern and Friends. So yeah. uh, that was Katie's dad's idea. He's a big fan uh, of me, apparently. So this is where I get to uh, pat myself on the back. Um, he's not apparently uh, of this of the idea that level four is a thing, just like I am. <laughs> and we're changing the topic of the show. So I can see Vernon Friends as like a nursery, like cartoonish kind of thing. Like I could, we could have, you could have a kid's podcast, Vernon Friends. Oh, there's Fern's little friend Ackerman. There's a little friend Katie, but but I don't think it would go over with the adult community, which is the demographic I tried to attract. I mean, I'm glad you think that. That's very cute. Um, so hey, Fern, Fern and friends, it is Fern. We'll do. You know what we're gonna do, Katie? I want you to put a poll on Instagram about okay. changing. Yeah, keep it best hour of their day, or change it to Fern and friends, and we'll see what comes back. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, wait, wait. If you're gonna put a Fern and friends option, I get an option. Yeah, but nobody cares. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody was like, we should change it to Ackerman and I get pals. Like Ackerman and pals. Multiple, yeah. multiple DMs every day. People saying things like that. All I'm. Sh- I listen. I'm happy to have you screenshot those and show the receipts, my friend. Show the receipts. Leave them just because I don't want you to even know right. about. Them. Oh, yeah, like- yeah. This is. This. Uh, yeah. Show the receipts. Uh, uh, we're gonna we do. Can- we're gonna go with. Uh, at- Back attack your day with Jason Ackerman and others. <laughs> and others. <laughs> uh, and others. All right. okay. On that note, we need to give away a, uh, a shirt uh, that says make group classes cool again. And mm-hmm. we put up something the other day and m- the we could put most of the comments in two buckets. Uh, it was either making fun of you jay or Mm -hmm. making poop jokes yep (laughs) (laughs) that was the those were the only two flavors of comments making fun of jay and poop jokes so um Mm -hmm. we will we will give away a free sheet t-shirt i will say i agree with you that they fell into those two buckets but i enjoy seeing the the people that listen to this show you know our listenership if you will being on you know there's a lot of inside jokes there was a one lot day, of inside jokes in there. One day, one day I hope to be a part of an inside <laughs> however, joke. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, I are they inside jokes? If if we have thousands of people listen to this podcast, are they inside jokes? I think so. I think an inside joke would just reference, hey, like you wouldn't get this unless you listen to the show. Okay. That's so fair. you know, obviously, most of our Instagram followers listen to the show probably, but if. If somebody were scrolling through, they'd be like, who's this L4 coach that like, everyone is referring to? Or, you know, why is Jay, why does this guy, Jason, bother Fern so much? Like, right. Like, do they even like each other? <laughs> yeah, they, they like each other. So, speaking of, we're, it's getting close, guys. It's getting to almost time that we're going to see each other. First time. Uh, don't be shocked if you show up and nobody's here and we've decided to meet elsewhere. What is <laughs> Hey, Fern, what about Oh, this? you're there? You're not, we're not there? We're in the just, just, hey, just hang it. We'll be there in a minute. Yeah, yeah, just then, <laughs> meanwhile, we're having a meeting without you. For this out there, I've never seen Katie's legs. What if we show up? She doesn't have legs. Yeah, spoiler alert, I'm legless. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no <laughs> legs. There's wrong with it. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's, you know. I think, I think that, Well, something... here's the deal, that you guys would look at each other eye to eye at that point, because you guys would be the same height. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I think it is going to shock you how much taller I am than you. That's yeah. probably going to be. <laughs> Are you taller than me? Are you taller than me? I'm, I'm like five, seven and a half. So. Are you really? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 She's basically a giant compared to you. Yeah. 
So that's Katie. Uh, I know you wanted to. I know you wanted to dunk. I am now putting my money. I will, I will bet you one. I will bet you one Bitcoin that Katie dunks on you. Well, Bitcoin's down today, so I accept that bet. Um, Done. <laughs> I, I I wonder if I can beat Katie one on one. I I don't probably really, not. I don't think I can take you, but I, I'll. I'll play what do you mean you don't think? Like you said that as, as like there's a chance. Like no, there's not a chance. Like if I was Wait, if I was literally incapacitated, which I had a le- weird little uh, spat on Instagram about the use of that term. It was on NC Fit post, and somebody was just like, "If a coach is incapacitated, blah blah blah." And I'm like, I think it was like a, you know, the Princess Bride, Inigo Montoya. It's just like he's like just- you, <laughs> you keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means. I say um, that at least once at every level two. Yeah. <laughs> when they're coaching, they'll be saying say, like the muted hip. <laughs> yeah, they'll say something. I'm like, and I always refer to an ego mind player. Well, what was it? You know, incapacitated. Were they kind of saying like, you know, he's being lazy, but inc- incapacitated means like, no, you don't get it. He's like literally dead on the floor. Right. Well, there was it was about like I was in, I don't know if it was a repost from MDV, but the it was something about like coaches and their demoing and the coach is like, you know, well, coaches still go to work when they're injured, uh, you know, and you coach, you know, being incapacitated. And I was like, we're, we're saying two different things here, right? Like incapacitated means like uh, I believe the term is non-ambulatory, like you are you are non-functional at all, right, which is different than being injured. Like I ruptured my Achilles. I was injured, but I still coached. I was not incapacitated. So anyway, hey, let me ask um, you a question about before we get to these winners, did you see my post about being hurt and being a CrossFitter? I did. What, what's your opinion on that? I don't necessarily agree. Well, no, that's why I'm asking. What, right. what, what, what about it don't okay. you agree with? I, that, that's an education piece. I don't know that that's, I don't know that it doesn't make you a CrossFitter. Okay. You're being hyper. You're obviously being hyperbolic, right? That's what you do on Instagram. Yeah. It's just like I want followers, right? I'm I somebody like me. That's that's you. That's a, that's a cry I for help. No and friends. Worth somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cry for help. My it's a cry for help. Is changing the name of the podcast. <laughs> Burning friends sucks. Um, no, no, I think it, yeah, obviously when I post things on Instagram, they are somewhat hyperbolic, um, and, and you know more more to grab attention, but. And, and ultimately, we've talked about this before. People will argue with the wrong things. Like, right. there's somebody arguing about the fact that you shouldn't have gotten hurt doing CrossFit because CrossFit's dangerous. I'm like, we're not talking, we're talking apples and pomegranates, not apples and apples there. Ooh. So, you like that? Um, no, but I think it's important, too, to, to know. You know, we talk about this quite a bit. In general, just business partnership and other people. It's fun to have someone like each other that it would have been very easy for you to be like, yeah, I agree. Right. But it's fun to have someone right. who's like, Oh, like th- this is why I don't agree. And they would talk about it. Everybody, everybody tries to surround themselves with, you know, people that yes them and, uh, and, you know, only agree with them. It's, it's good to be challenged. I, I am. I'm increasingly turned off by that uh, for a lot right. of reasons. Yes. Like if it, it uh, by by group think and yes people right so like you I mean it's it's very prevalent like in the in the in society today where like is if you if you're if, if if somebody disagrees with you then they're the devil right like regardless of where you sit with regard with how your feelings about like sex or religion or politics or whatever there there is going polarity with 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 all of those uh, topics that if if you don't agree with me then you are terrible and uh, and the root of all evil, and I just don't subscribe to that idea. Uh, and I and I and the more and more I get in a in, in a room or, or echo chambers where like everybody is saying the same thing, I like get very it's very unnerving to me. And I'm like I, I don't, this is probably a bit uh, uh, tainted, if you will. And I and I I think a gr- disagreement, polite disagreement, is how you learn things. And I, and the lack of ability, the lack of typically what I find is the lack of um, desire to do that is um, for a lot of instances, I think it can be just lack of confidence in the idea that, that it is that somebody's arguing, right? Or, or just this idea that you have to be right, right? Like I'm willing to change my opinions on most things. But I think you know? somewhere you see this quite often is in the affiliate space. I think, you know, I know for certain when I had my box and six full-time coaches and probably, you know, a dozen or so 
part-time coaches, not only were most of them, you know, yes men and yes women, but those that did disagree very quickly got kind of ostracized from the, you know, click or the in crowd. But, you know, and there was a big mistake I made, you know, all, all, all the time, you know, I had one guy who would give me pushback and we would butt heads and really what I should have done is embraced it. And I think a lot of right. boxers are the same, you know, you, you have some mild success, you see some nice things going on at the gym, you think you know everything, and then you get upset when other people try to challenge you. Now, you know, and I think part of it is the way that people approach you, you have to be willing to accept, you know, we talk about how there's a plane landing, the plane's gotta come in right, but the landing strip's gotta be open, right? So it's got it's a two-way street. But at the same time, if you're, if you're a box owner, you need to listen to your coaches because they do have a, an insight that you might not have. I'm, I'm constantly asking him that question. I'm like, what, what am I not seeing? What are the blind spots? What feedback do you have? Good, bad, or indifferent? You know, I asked it last night at the staff meeting and I got some feedback. They were like, hey, you need to be a little bit more willing to do blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's fair. Like, it's not high on the priority list. This is why I pushed it off. But if you guys are telling me that it needs to bump up, then it'll bump up. And I'm like, okay, done. And I like took action on it this morning. If, so can you, do you mind giving us a uh, specifics? Uh, there was some fairly minor things like that were, that were trying to get done that were, that were in air quotes of mine that have been getting pushed off just because of busyness and other things take priority. And Cassie was like, Hey, just hand those off, dude. And I was like, okay, done. If you wanted it's yours, you know, so All right. nothing pressing, you know, it wasn't emergent, you know, um, but, it, and that's kind of, uh, Let's do this. So I, this is a good segue into today's topic because I think this one it does have uh, two flavors to that. So we'll wrap up with the winner and the quotes. I know we'll do it at the end. Yeah, we'll do it at the oh, end. We'll do it at the end. Okay. Um, oh, smart yeah, move. We'll do it at the end. Listen to them. Yeah. They make them listen to us ramble. Yeah. You're going to earn uh, that. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So um, the, the, the idea, this idea of um, we'll, we'll put it in, the, in the, the larger bucket of converting leads. And there's, I think there's largely like two schools of thought. There's like fast and then there's better. Like we, we could probably throw in those two buckets, right? So um, I think the world of Facebook ads has largely pushed the fast convert leads, convert, vert, 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 which is like a lot of automation, you know, Scipio, front desk, a lot of these, um, you know, as soon as something uh, hits your website, they immediately get a text or an email back that says, hey, thanks for contacting us again, which we all know we've talked about that is automated. You're not fooling anybody. I'm so mad when I write to somebody, even like our newsletter that goes out, when we get an auto reply, I get so mad because I'm like, I don't care. Like you're you're giving me more, and I know they're not meant. You know, someone's out of town. It's a case someone, but the, in the reality these days, when it comes to email, and I know you're going to get into this, Fern, but it's like, I I think email has shifted. Originally, it was like there's snail mail, and it takes days, if not weeks. And then it was like email. Wow, we should be able to respond immediately. And then texts are like, where are you? I texted you 18 seconds ago, and I think we in general, just in life, have evolved now to the point where we realize, hey, the expectations we place on others, like I've realized, like, I try to keep an inbox zero, which is, and then I'm like, that's a, from a stoic perspective, completely outside of my control. I can have somebody just spamming me with nonsense. Do I need to get, you know, and I've gotten so much better at either archiving or snoozing them. So they, so, hey, maybe my inbox is empty. And I snooze it to when I'm going to respond. And I know this is slightly off topic. It's an Ackerman rant, not a vernacular or a furnism, if you will. But I think this notion that everything needs to be responded to yesterday has to go away, you know, from, from multiple levels. I, when I own the boxes, I, I push like, we need to respond within an hour. And to me, it's like, man, if you're responding to me that fast, are you that busy with other shit? Like, aren't you so like aren't you successful enough that you don't have that you're not just sitting at your computer so anyway go on for sorry i mean no it's legit however that i mean maybe maybe not like i don't even know that that's the point which is like how fast do you respond but i do think it, it, everybody has moved towards speed right it's just like yeah. the old the old adage is like time is money and i'm like well that's not the only thing that equals money or like better equals money more sincere equals money right well, like and so and i think i think if the i've been 
really think about this because we had we had one of our um and so anybody that comes through affiliate you like it's one of the first things when we start to look at what they're doing sales process and all that thing tons of people probably it's either one of two buckets either they're not responding to anything that comes across their landing pages on their website like they're just not doing it at all yeah. or everything is automated and the first thing i tell people is if they're not responding i'm like start responding right now like you're not that fucking busy i'm sorry we, we, when, when we, you know, it's funny, when, when we first launched, my father is always asking me questions about, what do you do for a living? Like those kinds of things. You know, he, he was a lifelong dentist and he thinks it's weird that like, you know, I've always been involved in fitness, but what that looks like is shifted. And he's like, what, what affiliate, what, like you, like, who are you to help other people? Bob, like he doesn't, right? And then he's like, you're a loser. He's like, you know, when we first launched in like November, we had some clients that immediately had some tremendous success. And he's like, but what do you do? I was like, well, <laughs> I tell them to get back to their emails. That's step one, you know? And it's like, he's like, huh. And he's like, people need to know that. And I'm like, yeah, dad, like, yeah. I, for the record, I want to say that I agree with both Katie's dad and your dad that we should change the name of the podcast to Friend and Friends. And I also have the same question as to what the fuck you do all day long. Like, it's so, so funny to hear him like, <laughs> it, it's just like he's like what do you like he'll ask me like and every time we get on the call i'll be like you know so again what what is it that you do like yeah. he just doesn't i think he said to me when he was here last he said something like it's so strange like i had the same job for 50 years you know yeah. and like you you he it was like a backhanded compliment he's like you've always like like evolved with, right. with the times, if you will. Um, so, and that's, that's a very, um, that's a, that's a good point, right? Just the evolution of this. Since I think some people feel the need to, to evolve too fast and then to move directly into this world of fast now, yesterday. Um, so one of the first things I'll tell people was like, turn off all that automation right now, turn it off. Like number one, you're not fooling anybody. And number two, it, it's, this is, this is it. again, we could use the analogy of dating over and over and over, right? Like if somebody reached out to you and they were interested and the first thing that hit them was an automated text, it'd be like, hey, um, I'm, I'm kind of busy with the boys right now, but if you're super interested, then go ahead and hang out and then I'll text you uh, here shortly, right? It's just, it's nonsense, right? And one of the big issues is I think people are unwilling to recognize that they are not something that they want to be, meaning they are not this mega business that requires automation in order to get some sort of reasonable kind of conversion, if you will, in air quotes. CrossFit is not that. There, there is, I can think of no gyms that are that large that can't make your initial point of contact with somebody who is inquiring about joining your gym personal. I still do all of the lead follow-ups and almost all of the consults here at CrossFit, right? And we get 30 to 40 a month. And well, they're not, it's not automated. It's just like follow up with people, have a conversation. You're not that busy. It's okay if you shoot a text out and then they respond and then you respond back five to 10 minutes later because I'm, because I'm busy or somebody walked in and I had a conversation with them. And what you will find is people will be more likely to come in because they will know the difference between a bot or something that you automatically set up versus you just reaching out to them and having a genuine conversation about what it is that you could do. And every time we do this, every single time we have people turn off this automation, the experience on the end users side of this is better. And the what this ends up leading to is better retention long term, because the initial point of contact was better. Right. So it's like time is money, you know, better is money too. So and you don't need more time, you need to do it the right way. Well, one of the things that you and I preach with Affiliate You is, yes, in order to have a successful business, you do need to make money. But more important than that is it needs to be fun. I mean, we recently had a our group call after after our initial call with, with I don't want to use her name just because I don't know if her members right. listen. You know, she, she said, like, I went in and had a conversation with one of my members and listened to Ackerman and said something like, is this guy making my life more fun? And it was a no. And she, you know, got rid of him at the box. And I think that's, you know, it's important. As you're talking about that stuff, a couple of things that you said that, 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 you know, got me thinking, it's like the same boxes, 
that will tell you their drawing power and their, their most successful aspect is community are the ones that are having a bot. Like where, where is community there? And, and I agree with you. Like I said earlier, like I was half joking, but I will, when I call somebody like Amazon, even like zero, 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 let me talk to somebody. Right. Maybe 43, maybe I'm a little older, but depending on the scenario, I don't want to do like, sure. If it's a quick return or whatever. And I know I've been pumping this book, uh, effortless, effortless. I, I really enjoy it. And there's a section in there where he says like, I think it was Amazon. Like they were getting so many messages about their tracking number that they realized they need to have something on their site. So if you lost your email, you can log in and get it. There's a, there's a time and a place to automate, right? Like maybe right. the workouts you have go in, from sugar water, from Wattify to something else. Automate that. Do not automate the first line of contact. I mean, like I said, I maybe it's because I'm 43, but I, it's I've learned it's much easier to just sometimes hop on a phone. And in these scenarios, it's kind of like that. Sure, maybe you don't need to call them, but you need to be able to address what they want. Because oftentimes it's like, hey guys, I'm a little concerned about coming to CrossFit Rife. You know, I'm 15 pounds overweight. It's been 20 years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what to do. Can you let me know? And then the response is like, hey, we can't wait to see you at your free no sweat trial. And it's like, <laughs> what? Like, I'm telling you, what like, I asked. <laughs> I'm afraid to come in. And then, you know, the next response is, you know, so be ready to get a great workout and bring a water bottle. I'm like, what? Like, I just, you, you can't, you can't say to me that community is your biggest selling point when you automate and, and, and no one cares if it takes, yes, there's, yes, there's certainly an idea of like when someone's scrolling through there, we can't deny that there's something to do with the speed of your response. It's important. We're not, but I don't think what you're suggesting for an is dilly dally and take 72 hours. You're just saying, Hey, have, you know, whether it's in an hour when you sit down to your phone or, you know, maybe it's a, one of your coaches even that does it. point is have a real human respond, not a bot. Right. So I'm definitely not suggesting dilly dally. I, I think a very reasonable timeline, I think it should be faster, but I think if you were responding within that half of the day, I would consider that a B plus. A plus is within, you know, one to two hours. Um, a lot of times I'll just, it will be within five to 10 minutes because I'll get a notification. I, I've seen some really sleazy shit on some of these automations where like they will put in the automation a misspelled word with a follow on. Be like, oh, I misspelled that. Sorry. Right. I'm just like to pretend it's a fucking person. And I'm like, you are gross. Like I that is gross and disgusting. Like you should not, if you're doing that, stop right now. Let, let me give you a, a large piece of advice. Like stop. That is gross. Don't do it. And I agree with you wholeheartedly like that. That is so counter to this idea that we have great community. Your community is so great that we don't have time to call you back. No, you, well, that's the thing you said earlier too. It's like, you're, you're lying to yourself. You're, you're right. not busy. And, and really, if you are, the, if you truly are that busy, like, oh, I, do, I really don't have time. It takes me 48 hours to respond. Then you need to go back and listen to previous episodes about eliminating, automating, and delegating. Because unless you're coaching eight hours a day and you're the only one at your box, you have the time. You're misappropriating it. You're, you're putting time elsewhere where, I mean, yes, coaching is important. Yes, coaches development. Yes, being a part of the community but other than those things, I mean, fostering these new leads who are ultimately going to become your clients. And you and I are huge proponents of retention over leads. Like, take care of your current people. We're not suggesting we're flipping that. We're just saying you have the time. You're not, you're lying to yourself. And, and big picture, like you said, no one is getting that. Do you really, do you think anybody gets that response and thinks, wow, oh, they were this is a, they were really they fast. Grammar, but I still want to go there. Right. Yeah. It was 20 to uh, 0.5 seconds to respond. I'm like, that's real. They must've been just sitting on their computer. Like, well, they must no. have it. Set so it doesn't go auto auto. It must be like a three. I've seen time. somewhere. It's just like submit text. And you're just like, that's, there's no way it's just, it's physically impossible for them to have like typed that out in the amount of time that it came in to get to me. Right. So like, but th there's this other idea that like the, the lead response has no overlap 
with retention. Again, going back to just like, if it's a first date, like the way yeah. you respond to people is a first date, which probably has a large significant implications on somebody staying. And, and so this is what I have found when we stopped doing all of that. And we focused more on just doing the, the lead follow-up in a more personal, more genuine way. What is interesting about that is when people come in to, to do consults here at CrossFit Rife, the speed with which they get to the thing that is like really problematic is alarmingly fast. You know, so be like, hey, uh, did you have any problems finding the place? Nope. Sign the waiver. Yeah, absolutely. Come on in and let's chat. How can I help you? Like, I'm severely depressed. I put on 60 pounds. I'm going through a divorce. I need to change my life. And I'm like, wow, that was really fast. Like, we got there. We're here immediately. Like, there was no, like, my name's Bob. It was just like, here's all my shit. And it's just like, but that's not going to happen. But if it, everything is automated, that happened because we had a series of, of conversations about coming in and, and what and, and how we wanted to help them and all that kind of stuff, which then leads to longer retention because they're like, oh, these people give a shit. They, they, they genuinely want to help me. And it's not all about like getting my money like right now so that we can close the deal, you know? And if you are a one man band, then you have, then here's, and you have, just like Jay said, there, there's a priority issue here. If you, if you're like, I don't have time, if you're a one man band, meaning you are the coach, you are the, the owner, you're the accountant, you're the social media person. You have two jobs at this point, smash it on the floor for the 60 minutes for every class and follow up with every single person that hits your website. It's just like, Hey, I might be interested in potentially doing some fast exercise at this thing you call a box. Well, that's it. Those are your only two jobs. It's, it's funny because if you are a one man band doing all of that, which is unlikely at this point, you're, you're also unlikely to be getting that many new leads that you right. Get. So it, you know, works both ways. If you have, if you're that busy, and you're getting eight new leads a day, you, you would probably at that point have a second person on, on staff. So it's, again, it goes back to the fact that you're just not being- But think about the ridiculousness of the number that you just gave. Eight new leads a day? Yes, 240 people are hitting your website every day, booking consults, yeah, not getting- without running Facebook ads and spending a ridiculous amount of money, at which point 15% of those might show up. Yeah, I mean, really- what would like on a high end, not during times where people, you know, obviously during affiliate you, we have a couple of things that really bump the number of new leads up at different times of the year and different, you know, different events. So they're going to be, you know, we had somebody at 50, five, zero new leads. Yeah. That's it. That's insane. And that's unlikely to happen consistently. I would say at a typical box on a given week, three, five, maybe, we, we are on the high end and we average pr- roughly one a day, maybe sometimes more, but yeah. like roughly 30 a month. Right. And yeah. I'll get, I'll get 20 of those to come in. Yeah. And I get it. Some of those people are going to, some need more, t- some just need like, Hey, when can I come in this right. time? Some need like, Oh, coddle me and make me feel comfortable. Sure. But, but, you know, but on average, you're probably talking, you know, max 10 back and I mean, 10 back yeah. and forth would be right. like, email would be like three. That that's the other that's the other issue that I see people run into, and I and I think it's just and I don't it's a little harsh, but it's just lazy because somebody told you that speed is the only way to do this, right? Instead of just do it the right way, which is like booking, right? So for the record, we do have a place for people to book on my website. Ninety nine of a hundred do not, right? It's there, but most do not. The other ninety nine. We book them personally. Like we get on a text message or a phone call and find out their availability. And then I will book them personally. Me will book a consult for them and I'll send them a reminder. Now, if you want to put automation in appointment reminders, I think that's very reasonable. Like that's not weird, right? Like I want them to show up to the appointment, but I can't, you know, send that reminder at that specific time prior to them showing up to the consult. So that is not weird. And people don't find that to be lazy. People find the automatic response to, Hey, I'm, I'm interested. And they find that to be lazy. Have you seen the one I've seen the one where, uh, they actually get a response of somebody holding like a whiteboard ish type thing that changes. Like it says, like, we can't wait to see you with their name or something like it's pretty advanced for an automation. Well, 
I mean, if you just want to, again, if you want to do this, the, the fastest way that here's what I think is way better than that. Right. So again, that's, that's lazy. What you could do is anytime you're doing that, here's what I think. If I'm going to have a, a significant amount of interaction with you and do something like CrossFit, which I think is pretty intimate, that is probably indicative of, of the relationship we will have long-term, right? It, it will be, it will lack emotion. It will lack connection. It will lack a lot of these things. And you're oh. looking for the dollar. You're not looking to have impact on my life. If you wanted wanna, to do something like, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't want to use names because I, I, I like this person, but there were a couple of years ago, I was invited to a box. They were like, man, we're, they're crushing it. They were doing really well. Mm -hmm. and you know they're like but man something's going on like we don't keep these people oh no i, I know exactly what you're talking about yeah yeah i mean i've yeah. spoken to you about it yep and i went in there and yes the coaching was subpar and i coached a class and they were like oh that's what coaching looks like i'm like yeah that's step one but step two is like you're just getting these like weak relationships in right and and, and they were doing very you know everything that you're discussing and it was like and you can see it. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't a CrossFit vibe. People would come in, they get their workout, they'd go. And they would last a month, maybe a little bit longer. And, and they would, you know, disappear. There was no, so, and, and I think a lot of boxes are fooling themselves. Oh, we get 50 new uh, leads or 50 new members, especially there was that peak like two or three years ago of all those boot camps going on. And I was actually. Uh, yeah, I think it was like limb jaunch. Is probably yeah, kind of the exactly. you know what the name of it was. Yeah, Lim Josh. Yeah. yeah, I was coaching at a box, helping them out locally, and it was just constant turnover, and it, and it made it less fun as a coach because as someone that wasn't there often, I like coached a handful of times a week. It was like I couldn't create relationships with them because they wouldn't be there long enough. It's you, so you're not only fooling yourself you're fooling the client, which is even worse, right? It's, it's, it's deceptive. Like, I don't know how else to say that. Like you're not being honest about that. And that again, I think sets you up for failure. Um, and a better way to do that, a more genuine way to do that. If somebody does that, they do book a consult, you have their phone number, just whip out your phone, do a quick video says, hey, Jay, it's Jason here at CrossFit Ripe. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Can't wait to see you. Just text me back if you have any questions. Boom. And we done. do a Send lot it. of that stuff with right. affiliate you, but it's legit. Like, we literally make a video. And you know how you know it's legit? Because I say your fucking name in the video. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, that's how you know it's legit. It's like the old lottery commercials where they would always cover the guy's mouth when he would say the number. Maybe you're right. doing that. Are you doing that? And making... No. And, and making it that'd be funny no it'd be no. funny if we did that but then when we say their name it was my voice it goes, so from, I, it goes from real low to yeah. real high I, you know, like it'd be like hey and then it would be like johnny can't wait to see you <laughs> <laughs> so and again now I'm, I'm not opposed to automation but i want you to really consider like where you're implementing automation like their their automation is fine but not at certain points it's actually very detrimental at certain points and it's it's disingenuous and it's lazy and it tells me a lot about it's kind of like the bathroom things just like show me your bathroom and i'll and i'll kind of show you how how probably give you a pretty good idea of how the business runs it's like show me your initial point of contact and I'll probably show you how the business runs, you know, and, and again, fast doesn't always mean good. And, and I think, you know, for the listeners, we, we throw a lot at them every episode, every, you know, multiple times a week, I would say you don't have to believe us like wholeheartedly in the sense that like, we're making this change tomorrow, but I would say try not automations for a week, right? You don't have to commit to forever. You, you know, you may find oh firm was right you know met more of the lead you know how would you measure it well more of the leads actually came in and then ultimately joined and, and and you can always turn them back on or you know it's not only automation okay automation wasn't working i delegated so maybe you have that charismatic coach that in, in a, every box owner you know spoiler alert has a coach that wants more responsibility and, and, and that's a big one and, you know, maybe they're sitting at a desk all day and, and they they can get back faster than you. You know, they coach their two hours a night, but they they have a full-time job. So, cool, give them this opportunity. Hey, you're going to get back to them. 
do a role play like hey i'm the you know do um you know some different scenarios like you have the person that's intimidated to come in you have the person that wants to start yesterday you have the person who's heard of it and they're not sure you know make them work through those and and, and then let them go I, and i think the what you just said there's very important is is there's a there's a lack of depth with regard to the thought that goes into this process meaning because i think it, it's very important to acknowledge like the state here's an interesting one right so a lot of people will nod their heads as i say this as you go through there take a look at the time stamps of people that submit inquiries to your gym right and tell me what you notice about those time stamps do you have an answer I'm, I'm interested. i do have an answer but i want to know what you think it is my thought would be there's no um there's no pattern no, no, there's a very clear pattern in most of them. It's, it's late night. Yes, right. It's when people are in a, in a, in a um, like a. Um, feeling sorry for themselves mode. Right, feeling sorry for themselves. And they're in a, in a state of mind where like, I need help, right? So knowing that, this makes it even worse. Somebody is at a low point in their health and fitness. And we pinged them with a, hey, it's really happy. I'm really glad that you uh, reached out to CrossFit Rife. Can't wait to meet you tomorrow at this appointment that they didn't even book. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a real world example. And I didn't know we were going to you know, discuss this today, but it was literally like last night I was getting into bed and I'm looking at it now because it's still in my inbox. It was 931 at night. Uh, this girl or woman, Rachel, reached out to me and she was she's interested in the coach's development. And, you know, old me was like, oh, I got to respond. And then, you know, because I only saw like the banner on my uh, iPad. Right. It was on my iPad. And I was like, okay, I got to respond. And then two things went through my head. I'm like, it's 930 at night. Like, this isn't healthy for me. And there's no, you know, this isn't quite automation, but this is just more in, in line with that. I'm like, A, you have to take care of yourself. Like, I'm trying to go to bed. Like, I shouldn't be doing work at 930 at night in bed. My parents are in town. Babies, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then secondly, I actually did open the email and read it. And it was, you know, it wasn't overly long, like, but it was long enough that I was like, okay, I actually want to read this and make sure A, she's a good fit for this. Like, who knows? Like, maybe she's going to, you know, and B, why she wants to do it and give her a real response. Right. You know, I could have pinged her back and been like, here's the link. I'd love to have you join. Right. right? That's like what I would have, that would have been what I did. Right. But instead, I'm like, okay. And, you know, it's nine o'clock and I've got a couple of things after this call. Like it might not be till the afternoon. And I've gotten to the point where I'm like, even for a box on a perspective, we're not charging nine 99. We're not charging 1999. Like we're charging 150, 200 coaches development, even more like the, it gone are the days where like, I want them to make a rash decision. Like I want you to decide you want to come here and spend 150 plus dollars. Like, if you respond and like you kind of keep saying on that first date and trick them into sleeping with you on their first date, cool. Right. You, you had, you know, you, you did a one night stand. You're, you're good. But is that what you want as a box owner? Or do you, you know, do you want somebody to plunk down their first month and then realize they don't like it? Take your time, your energy, disrupt the class. Or do you want someone who thinks about it and winds up joining really gets invested in it and stays for the long term? And newsflash, even if you do this the way, you will still have those people that come in and then convince themselves otherwise. Like there's no avoiding it. Like there's just some people who are not ready to be helped. But if you're trying to churn and burn, like again, what you what you have developed either ignorantly or just out of pure sloth is a retention problem because you automated the initial point of contact. And if you want better retention, you need to turn off. You need to approach this from a human standpoint, understand where the other person on the other end of that interaction is at psychologically, and then treat them with care, right? Like just treat them with care because, you know, they're terrified. You know, this is something you should put. We've, we constantly just tearing this apart when they come in, what door do we want to come in? What's the first thing we want them to see? Like, how do we want them to be greeted? Like all of these things, just put a lot of thought into it because I know that they're terrified. We don't even have the argument anymore. Be like, it's assumed that they're terrified and I'm going to treat them as such. Like if you had a little kid that was like running into your room in the middle of the night and they're just like, I'm scared there's a monster. And you'd just be like, 
um, come back in the morning and then we'll solve that problem. Like, no, like you're going, you're going to treat them with care. And this is kind of like how you should treat new people that are coming in because you're only going to get more of them as things open back up. If people realize that health is like a really important thing and that they should probably try to take control of that. And they realize that CrossFit is probably one of the most effective means of doing that. Yes. Like you need to treat people with kid gloves. You know, it's like the adage that we have here. This is just like, Hey, baby birds, your only job is to not drop them. Right. Just don't drop them. Like that's your only job. Don't drop them. So if you want to convert more leads, turn off your automation. Like it's not that hard. It's not that time consuming. And if you have that automation on, you have retention problems. So typically I would have stopped the podcast right there. You're getting better at that. I would like to give you a compliment. You are getting better at it. Uh, but, at, but at the, I know you don't want to be better at it. I know there's some part of you that still wants to just like throw a wrench in it because that's who you are. I like to hold myself back. Yeah, you yeah. Um, however, you. but we do have big, some stuff to give away. Is I care too much for <laughs> care too much. Yeah, I just work too hard. It's my biggest weakness. Yeah. Uh, but we need to give away a prize. We do so, need to give away a prize. How, how are we doing this? Have we selected? I, I you know, here's something that you and I have gotten. I think better. it's worth reading all of them just because we can read some. I do have to get on another call and I've got the parents in town, but you I just think, don't want to hear the things people have to say about you. I want to <laughs> give another shout out to this book. And I, I make I make no money. I should make money. Uh, every time this book gets old, because I really believe in it, but it's all effortless. And there was a, another chapter in there about, you know, trust. And it was all about hiring the right people and this and that. And that's, you know, we got Katie. Like, she she makes oh. our lives easier because we trust her. Like, hey, Katie, but, you know, I think you even came up with this thing without even asking us, to be quite honest. The, uh, no, Fern. it was Fern. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> I, was wondering, I was like, where did she get this picture? So yeah. Fern, <laughs> Um, but anyway, then we were like, we, we had, a, so again, I will, I will kind of give everybody some tips here. Anytime we have bring a friend week, we have a photographer come in because it's great photos. So we dial up a right workout. There's a ton of people in there. I think it was like 95 people that came to the gym that day or something like that. Um, so this was you, she a, sent me, a very busy day. You sitting on the GHD looking grumpy. <laughs> that was you being pleasant to new people. No, that was, that was, that was me coaching. I was coaching oh, that class coaching. sitting. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> put your knees out, newbie. Uh, yeah yeah hey just try harder you guys will get it um <laughs> no i was i was watching the class i was just sitting off to the side just kind of like you know and i like i again i have admittedly i have resting dick face right so like that's just my i'm interested that grumpy is my cat. that's my I like grumpy cat. that's right i'm grumpy cat yeah resting dick face i just that's my i'm interested in what's happening face which is kind of a weird face but um but she took that and i sent it to Kay. i was like this is kind of funny i could see people would really enjoy making fun of this well, so i sent it to her i was like hey free t-shirt giveaway and then she put it up there and i actually didn't think we were going to get that many comments there is a there is a slew of comments on there well, and again they fall in two categories making fun of jay ackerman and poop jokes i was going to say it's interesting <laughs> that you you sent it to katie saying people are going to make fun of this yet somehow they made fun of me well i i actually knew that too yeah, yeah. you thought that <laughs> you thought that all right katie Read all right so on. Read us your, your top picks. Yeah, so I pulled I pulled the picks that were my favorite. So if you guys want to look while I'm doing this, but um, because we did get almost 100, 100 comments. So some of my favorites. Um, uh, let's, do a, let's do a top three. Let's do a top three get t-shirts. Top three? That's all. We awesome. top three? Yeah. Is that too all right, much? So do, do you want me to read the ones I liked and then you guys choose the top yeah, three? Just, hey, listen, Jay, remember we talked about this the other day, just like let Katie do her thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So first one, um, having some alone time after remembering that one workout you lost to a kid wearing leggings from the leggings from the baby gap, but I'm so convinced <laughs> that Ackerman shaved some reps though. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. I thought All that right. was a really good one. Who said that? Um, Allie Griggs is That's her handle. Girl? The girl said yeah. that? To girl. <laughs> oh. That was a good one. I didn't, I, cause I perused these. I didn't read them all. Yeah. all right, oh, like, there's some, ge there's some gems in here. I, I would actually go so far as to say there's not a bad one in the whole list. There's yeah, not a bad there's one some real good ones. I mean, I did laugh more at the ones that made fun of me than just the general goof ones, but yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. That's my number all right, one. Next, That's my next one. The next one I liked was, it was simple. Um, it says, when no one will help you tie your shoes because Fern's shoes are not tied when he's sitting there. <laughs> that was All a funny right. one. Not, not um, quite, but it didn't make me LOL. It didn't funny. make you laugh. Okay. Okay. 
Um, that was from Sunny Windy. The moment, and then there's the next one. That moment when coach puts you in timeout for dropping a barbell um, the, for the second time in one day. Yeah. That was cute. I got it. I was, I was, okay, go ahead. <laughs> First one is still a winner. When they ask if power means from the ground. Okay. Yeah. I like that one. When you are pumped for your level two, but then coach Jason Ackerman shows up and you have to listen to him all weekend. <laughs> I did see that one. Did see that, one. that one's funny. Uh, um, when you're watching coach Jason Ackerman demo a men ball clean. <laughs> See, what's good about that one is it's a callback to a picture of me demoing the med ball clean. That's like, right. Right. that's a good one. And you're, and you're in your toes. Yeah. Weight's not in heels. Um, when Coach J Jason Ackerman mentions that he is a level four again. See, that's a good one. That's just yeah. classic. Timeless. It's I want to give Kay. I want to give Kayla a shout out because she she dropped one in here and says Jay can't reach me all the way up here. Yeah. <laughs> Kayla Jensen said that. Kayla yeah. And yeah. That's a good one. She's good. <laughs> um, this one is is relevant to what you guys just talked about. Uh, when you're waiting for your new members from those Facebook ads you paid for. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that we have. To, I think we have to give that one because it has to do with the show too. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the other one is Ackerman is going to rub this 50 squat challenge in my face for the rest of my life. Isn't he? <laughs> I like that one. See, I think the reason I like that first one so much is because it's like a joke on a joke. Right. Yeah. Like you That's add a one. reps bit in there and now it's really funny. <laughs> um, and then uh, when coach Jason Ackerman gets off topic yet again, five minutes, five minutes after he said he wasn't going to. Yeah. Um, and then good posture is for pansies. I thought that was good. Yeah. <laughs> that one's making fun of Fern. That one's yeah. making fun of Fern. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so right. those were the ones I pulled. Fern, do you have any others? Unbiased, which is your um, favorite, Katie. Let's like, hey, Fern, let's like we'll let, we'll let We'll let Katie pick. Yeah. <laughs> you let me pick. Honestly, I put the fir that first one first because that was my favorite one, too. I thought it was clever. So I got to go with that one, too. That, yeah. Can you read it one more time, Katie? Yeah. It's from Allie Griggs, and it's having some alone time after remembering that one workout you lost to a kid wearing leggings from the baby gap. <laughs> I'm still convinced that Ackerman shaved some reps, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many good jokes in there. Like, there's a lot of good remember, jokes Like there. the one workout, so she's making fun that I've only won one workout, which is kind of <laughs> true. True, yeah. Fortunately. Um, and then the baby gap, another <laughs> joke, and then ultimately the leggings. shaving. Uh, and she knows I wear tights all the time. Yeah. yeah. So right congratulations. You get a free make group classes cool again shirt. We will make sure that you get that. Uh, Katie, she, Katie will reach out to you and get all your info. Yeah. Katie will handle. Where is she from? Click on that. Uh, Let me. Um, I always love when women can bust balls for her. I think it's so funny. Like, I think it's hilarious. Men, We've I've, just, I've been very fortunate to work with with ladies my entire professional career that are i mean arguably worse than the dudes when well, you guys your wife jess who's a ball buster oh, and you got yeah. Lindsay there who's a big ball buster right all the east coast ladies are just you know sometimes i always make the joke that they have like the things in the trainer meeting when it's just like no certain types of jokes and i'm like you know that's because of the ladies not because of the dudes it's because oh, of the so ladies many, yeah so many of them no ogling um, Where's she from, Katie? It looks like she lives in Florida. She doesn't have um, anything listed in her bio, but yeah, it looks like she's in Florida. Well, Allie Griggs, <laughs> good joke. At my well, <laughs> well played, well played. All right, so she's gonna get a T-shirt, um, and I'm sure Katie will will look through. Did Nose Hold leave a comment? Um, oh, I didn't. Uh, he, I didn't see him leave one, but I forgot. Someone did leave a comment referencing him. I can't remember what it said though. Oh, they did. I didn't see. Yeah, that. we gotta. I'm you know something. confused about this nose hold guy because <laughs> he listens still because he comments once in a while. Hasn't changed his review. <laughs> still not. Did we get um more, a lot more reviews after I yesterday's I, 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 Monday I day? And I think that episode just went up <clears throat> where I asked for more reviews, but yeah. uh, I don't think we've got many. I think My dad definitely left a review. Did dad leave a review? All right, I'll he did. That. All right. We're going to wrap up this episode. 
Right, Vern? Right, Katie? We are. Sure. All right. And if you guys want to convert more leads, turn off the automation. Remember, you're in the relationship business. So, so start these relationships off on the right foot, and I promise you won't regret it. If you guys have more questions, happy to chat with you guys. Outside of that, have the best hour of your day. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.